and we're back um, so you can see I've decided to wear my Joshua Tree Tour shirt looks pretty boss uh, and it feels awesome <laughs> so so yeah continuing where we left off um, Red Hill Mining Town that performance was just simply unreal like it was just surreal to, to first uh, first first of all to hear that song live in person and second of all it was surreal to see considering how there's a number maybe off the top of my hand uh a number of their songs in their catalog that for 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 years fans have requested for them to play live but considering uh the band's um hesitation not in a bad way but but has more like cautionary hesitation to include a random song into their set because their 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 set lists usually have kind of a sequential almost narrative quality to them it seems like the band don't play any song to their liking just because they feel like it it's more of trying to give their audience and their fans the best possible full concert experience that they can so they 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 sequence certain songs in a set list in a particular order so it almost has kind of a narrative flow to them uh, in this case um, man I lost my train of thought um, in this particular case um, s uh, putting a random song into a set list can be very risky considering that it will take the take that song would take away from the narrative flow of of the entire set list or could probably add to it um, it's not exactly sure and 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 also my mind the fact also of how the audience's response is going to be towards it uh, which is pretty different in of itself uh, so so there's been years like for for the band you know acrobat from octum baby is one of those songs uh and and so was red hill mining town from joshua tree that was an, another song originally they had stated that they could not perform that song live repeatedly due, due to the vocal strain it will have on bono's vocals on his singing uh, considering this tour, uh, they there was no choice. They had to perform this song, and obviously, from what I said in the last video, again I'll splice this together later. Um, it it really they really did a brilliant, fantastic job with the song. Again, they they lowered the the key of the song like a half step down. Um, I think. Um, anyways they lowered the key down for Bono's vo voice to be more comfortable and more accommodated without putting too much strain and effort to reach a certain key of the original song and it was really brilliantly performed I mean again as I said before the edge had his piano had the piano thing going the rest of the band contributed as well like Larry and Adam just keeping that rhythm section tight and Bono just really singing the songs and singing singing the lyrics to this song in a way that I never saw before like I mean like he was clearly enjoying uh, singing a tune that they have not performed like I say nearly like, like two two or so decades after the song was originally released and it was it was re as, as a fan it was really a, a treat it truly was a, a treat to witness and to experience um, I do wish there was a little a, there was more edge played guitar a little more in this rendition I do wish it could have been that uh, I'll get to downsides after I finish this review uh, but otherwise the band performed stellar in this rendition it was about it was really amazing to have witnessed that song live and in person uh next comes uh, in god's country uh 
what's also very interesting about about the screen technology is that they had a lot of different backdrops in in, in this particular screen. You put the for streets of the name. You had uh, you had the background of a street that is going uh, uh, like a street in the in the middle of like a desert wilderness. Obviously, in reference to uh, the desert theme, the like street nameless theme that the Joshua Tree um, is 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 speaking about lyrically, uh, and in God's country, band wise, it was as like amazing as as you would think. I mean, they did perform that song. I heard. In, during the last uh, tour, Innocence and Experience, but this time around it was the full band performance, the full, the whole, the whole enchilada, and brilliant, fantastic. Like I mean, I mean, especially like the younger U2 fan inside of me was just like, like, oh my gosh, they're playing the full band version, you know, and it was fantastic, you know, just amazing. I mean, it was played near almost exact as as how the album is recorded as as it as it is in the recorded version uh originally and it's and they again perform stellar in this one and then following that comes in got um trip through your wires uh i mean i honestly before this one i really 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 enjoyed um their their performance of the song in Paris, France, during the ori the original 1987 tour, uh, I really loved that that rendition. But this rendition was was almost amazing, as well. I mean, you have Bono performing, p playing with the harmonica. Um, the Edge, of course, he's doing his thing, just like strumming away, and Adam and Larry just keeping that rhythm section nice and tight and concise, and is and stellar performance just like the rest of the songs off here like like I really love that song because it's just it's just a really straight ahead rock and roll almost kind of blues but with kind of a swagger to it and I really love that um, this trip through your wires stellar performance um, then follows uh, One Tree Hill and if you're a U2 fan, you would know that, that, that this song was dedicated or is dedicated on the record and in all live performances to the late Greg Carroll, who was the band's uh, roadie uh, from New Zealand uh, throughout much of the early to mid-80s. He sadly died in, in a motorcycle crash in around 80, 1986, maybe early 87, I could, I could be wrong. But definitely around there, he tragically passed away, and um, it was the first real, real death in, in the band, as far as deaths within their their own entourage, within their own inner circle, and it was it was a death that really hit the band really hard at that particular time, and still does to this day. And so this song in this particular show was was played and dedicated to anyone who had lost any close friend, family member, um, loved one, friend, comrade, uh, anyone who had experienced a sense of loss in their life. Uh, and obviously this, con th this announcement just kind of like brought up all sorts of people in my, you know, in my mind who who passed away the last two years. Um, I don't want to go personal here a little bit, but it reminded me of my of my grandma, who who died in uh, two years ago in October. She passed away of uh, of pneumonia in her native uh, home country, homeland of. Uh, or actually, no, uh, yeah, homeland of, uh, of Lima, Peru, where my parents are from. And, and it was really, 
it was really sad. It was really disheartening to go through, but we took to the knowledge that she is in a place, I mean, call that, call that heaven, call that the, the outer reachness of the universe, call it what you will, but we, we took solace in knowing that she is in a much better place than here. I mean, but in any case, that, what, that, what, that is what went through my mind when Bono announced that and the performance of One Tree Hill definitely showed that and again just performed stellar with with heart with passion with feeling and yeah I can't can't bring up anymore I mean and other people around me who have who have lost people close to them near and dear to them you know also ran through my head but the band really supplemented that loss with just a very stellar and heartfelt performance of One Tree Hill, you know, and definitely brought it brought a tear to my eye hearing that. Of course, stellar performance. Uh, and also you get like the Oh Great Ocean um, song, the lyric in, in that particular song. Uh, probably edit that out later. Uh, exit. Uh, this is a song like Red Hill Mining Town have been just ache, you know, ached by, by the band's fans for them to play. Um, it's probably one of their most darkest, most menacing tracks in their catalog. Um, I really, really like looked forward to hearing that song in, in anticipation of what the band were, was going to do. Uh, if they were going to change it up or if they were going to keep it they mostly kept it they kept it very straight ahead they kept it raw they kept it just straight up um, again it's a dark menacing song uh, and Bono came out like dressed as another alter ego like he has been doing for the last couple of tours since uh, Zoo TV this time he, he came out dressed as uh, as Shadow Man, and Shadow Man is a character that Bono personifies as supposedly. I mean, and, and this is just my interpretation. This is not a official description from the band of of the character, but from what I gathered, it, it was it was a uh, for me it was a person who you know was trying to is in this internal struggle between between love and the the it's what I it's what I call the egotization of religion and of how certain people take religion into their own liking into their own um, very de very demented view to the point where it becomes almost mili militaristic um, reminds me of uh, Isis and Al Qaeda and all those other groups um, and uh, and even here at home also reminds me of that. And and he came out kind of like dressed, you know, with like the hat and the black uh, jacket in total. And uh, I mean, it was another stellar performance. It was dark. It was menacing performance. You know, like like again, it reminded me of the performance in the Rattle and Hum DVD. Uh, of the film Rattle and Hum that they released in 88 and it, it reminded me it took me back to that performance uh, me personally I think the one in the film is, is superior in some ways but but this one kind of took the cake also because first of all I'm there witnessing it and then second of all like the band just did a brilliant job fantastic job in, in just uh, uh, executing this song immensely like I mean it's, it was raw it was dark and at times it got even super intense especially near the end where they added an extra uh, instrumental layer at the end of the track and it was just like man just like rock and just 
really it's just hard rocking performance on, on on that one and Bono too just got super intense at the end like he's like he's staring at the camera he's in your face and he's like moving it around you know he's like he's screaming at the camera he's yelling at the camera he's just like death in the face of the camera you know it's just really just intense performance that's the one word I can describe it was intense as that song is and it was brilliantly fantastically masterfully performed by all the members of the band simply brilliant and finally you have the mothers of disappeared the closing track off the record this one as i've said numerous times both on camera and and, and off camera i've mentioned that this song was really important to me was really um big for me as someone of spanish origin and uh if you i mean i don't want to go through the details but if you know what this song was written about it was written about mothers of whose children were just taken away from them in the dead of night and either they had gone missing or they were left for dead by the chilean uh, pinochet brutal regime and uh that song uh, was written about that or if it was not written exactly about that it was written in relation to the mothers of whose uh, family and children and relatives were taken away and murdered and or missing uh, on the screen you had um, you had a uh, you had like all these different children or these different people holding candle like vigil candle lights immense like this this very black and blue backdrop behind them on the screen and uh and of course the band performed fantastically well in this song as they usually do uh, in this particular case to have witnessed this song live and in person was just absolutely without words like without question was just really amazing to to hear and amazing to see um, and of course the band finished that song uh, oh and Larry did a fantastic job with the drumming of that particular song as well uh, and and so they take their bow and then they leave the stage uh, and then you got the encore and the, en the encore starts off with uh, Miss Sarajevo uh, this time before Miss Sarajevo there was a introduction to a woman a Syrian woman who 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 was not, not suffering but a, but a Syrian woman who was reading off uh, a story of her survival of the Syrian conflict um, it even had like drone shots of of the city just completely in rubble and just destroyed um, a bit of a miscommunication happened here actually uh, there was a uh, by accident I was I was blocking the person behind me uh, I think it was a husband and her wife his wife uh, from seeing the view and this was when the Syrian person was speaking on the, on, on the screen and she was trying to tell me you know to sit down because I was blocking her view and at the time I was so engulfed in the show I couldn't really understand what she was saying and then it wasn't until the husband came up to me and and repeated like can you please sit down you're blocking her view kind of thing you know so that was that was kind of weird a little bit a little bit off putting although it's more of a misunderstanding than anything intentional from both our sides uh it dampened it a little bit but the performance in of itself was brilliant fantastic uh they had a cloth like a like like a cloth thing of of the Syrian woman uh, wearing a, what's that thing the scarf the the Muslim scarf around her I can't remember remember the name uh, a jihab I think or I think that's what it's called anyway they had they had a mural of it like a like a cloth that was carried around by the audience in our section. Um, it didn't get to us by the time it, 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 it neared us by the time the song ended but uh, 
it was a brilliant performance nonetheless. Um, uh, I forget, what's the next song? Forgive me, 